Welcome to this week's episode of Medical Mavericks TV, where we'll be looking at your senses. Over the next three episodes, we'll be checking out everything from your tongue, to your eyes, to your skin, and even playing some tricks on your brain. Warning, these are seriously practical episodes, so be prepared to prod, poke, balance, and taste. The first sense we're gonna look at is our sight. And for this, we need two eyes and your brain. But before we get practical, here are 60 seconds of facts about your eyes. Fact one, your eyeball is a ball with a hole in the front. This is called the pupil. Covering your pupil is a thin layer of cells called the cornea. And behind this is a lens that focuses a light through your pupil onto your retina. The colored bit around the outside is your iris. Fact two, the retina is where your rod and cone cells are. These are the special cells that are stimulated by light and send signals to your brain. Rod cells allow us to see black and white and are spread out around the retina and help us see in darker environments. Cone cells allow us to see colour. The highest concentration of these are found in the fovea, which is the central part of the retina. This is where your vision is sharpest. Fact 3. Each eye is connected to your brain by a nerve called the optic nerve. All the tiny neurons from your rod and cone cells collect together as one big nerve and leave as one. The point at which the nerve leaves your eye is called the optic disc, also known as your blind spot. This is where the blood vessels also come in and out of your eyeball. The signals from your eye are actually processed at the rear of your brain in the occipital lobe. So you don't actually see with your eyes. The brain is where the images are produced. Have you ever noticed how your pupil changes size when you walk in and out of a dark or a light room? You probably won't have noticed it on yourself, but you would notice it on a friend. And this next practical will show you how. All you need is a phone. A quick warning on this one, you're going to shine a light into your friend's eye. So don't do it too close or for too long. Here's how to do the experiment. Sit in front of your friend and look at their pupils. From a safe distance, shine the camera light towards their eye. What did you notice? It should have got smaller. Now here's a really cool trick. Put your hand between their eyes as a divider so your light can't affect both eyes. Look at their right eye and shine the light into their left eye. What did you notice? Did the pupil still get smaller even though no extra light was shone on it? It should have. Here's how it works. Both eyes detect the amount of light entering and hitting the retina. This info from both eyes comes into a central point in your brain. This single area then sends signals to both eyes to control the size of the pupil. So it doesn't matter if one or both eyes are stimulated by the light, they'll both react. This is called your pupil reflex. If one pupil doesn't react, that is a sign of a brain injury, making it a really useful tool for assessing head injuries. At school, are you told to wear goggles like this? Obviously you're wearing them to protect your eyes, but there's one very important part of your eye you've got to protect, and that's called your cornea. Your cornea is a thin layer of cells that covers the front of your eye, and it's pretty amazing. Your cornea is less than half a millimetre thick and is the size of a five pence piece. There are no blood vessels in your cornea. If there were, your vision would be all blocked. The cells get their oxygen from the air as it dissolves into your tear fluid and the nutrients are also supplied through this fluid too. Your cornea can also be transplanted from one person's eye to another. The cells in your cornea right now are the exact same cells you had in your eye when you were in your mom's womb. And they'll be the exact same cells when you die. They don't regenerate or repair very well, so you only get one set of cells in your entire life. Making a cornea transplant very useful. You can actually see these cells in your cornea using a very special piece of kit called an anterior segment optical coherence tomography. Yes, I said it. And this is me having mine scanned and it produced these two amazing images. This first image is a profile shot and you can see the dome-like shape and how thin it is. That is my cornea. This second picture is an image of my cornea cells taken with the same machine. If you look closely, they are all hexagon shaped. The ophthalmic scientist that took these images colours them in depending on their size. 
and the computer assesses the health of my cornea based on the area, size and shape of the cells. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Okay, it's time for another Do Try This At Home and all you're going to need is a pen and a piece of paper. And with these two things, we're going to find the blind spot in your eye. Now I know what you're thinking, I'm not blind Tom, but you are. In each eye, you've got a little spot where your vision is actually blind. But you never actually notice it because each eye covers for the other one, so you never notice your blind spot. But with these two things, we're going to find out where they are. On your piece of paper, draw a cross and a dot about 8 to 10 centimetres apart. Hold the piece of paper out at arm's length. To test your left eye, put the dot on the left hand side. To test your right eye, turn the paper around so the dot is on your right. Whichever eye you're testing, close or cover the other eye. Make sense? Stare at the centre of the cross and don't take your eye off it. Slowly bring the piece of paper towards you and be aware of the dot in your peripheral vision. At some point, about halfway towards your face, the dot should disappear. Keep moving the paper towards you and it should reappear. That's pretty cool, isn't it? When the dot disappeared in that test, the light was actually hitting the dot on the piece of paper, enters through your pupil and hits a specific part of your retina called the blind spot. This is also your optic disc. And we can see the optic disc with a special piece of kit like this, which is called an ophthalmoscope. And normally we would come along and have a look into your eye like this. However, that's not very useful. So, a medical engineer has designed this special bracket that we can clip the ophthalmoscope into. And in the front of the bracket, we can fit an Apple iPhone. And we can use the camera on the phone to look through the lens and take a picture of your optic disc and your retina. Literally making this an iPhone. Okay, we'll move on. And this is how we use this piece of kit to see your blind spot. Okay, B, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this ophthalmoscope to take a picture of the inside of your eye. All I'm gonna do is shine a light through your pupil to illuminate your eyeball, okay? So you have to open up the app on the phone and it brings up the camera. You're just gonna stare at the top of my nose, okay? I'm gonna shine this into your eye and we can see pretty much straight away your lovely optic disc and those blood vessels, they're lovely. Okay, let's just stop there. And what we can do is we can flick through some of these. Look at that, B. That's a good shot. Let's zoom in on that. There we go. So what we can see there, that round disc, that's your optic disc. And that's where the nerve leaves your eye and goes to your brain. So all those signals that go to your brain go down a nerve down that hole there, okay? And the red lines are the blood vessels that come into your eyeball, okay? And that there, that circle, if you measured it from this, either side, the diameter, your blind spot's roughly two millimetres inside. So it's a tiny, tiny portion of your retina we've seen here. Okay, that's a lovely, perfectly healthy optic disc on your retina. Think of your blind spot like this. It's the only entry and exit point at the back of your eye and it makes your eye really efficient. If you had blood vessels and nerves coming in all over the back of your retina, you'd have lots of little blind spots all over the place. You can see this is just one tiny part of your retina. But what does the rest of the retina look like? Take a look at this image to find out. You can clearly see the blind spot. And look at how the blood vessels branch out. None of them go straight through the centre of my retina. That spot there is called the fovea. Remember, your fovea is where your vision is sharpest. It only has cone cells for colour vision here. And if blood vessels would go straight across this section, your vision wouldn't be as good. You can see on this video clip how blood flows through your retina. This was performed using fluorus fundus angiography, where a special fluorescent dye is injected into your veins, which flows around your body, and we can see it on this image. You can clearly see how your blood flows around the fovea and not directly over it. How we see is quite a complex process, and there are many factors that can affect our vision, from our anatomy to our genetics. An example of this would be how our eyes are wired to our brain. 
and we're going to have a look at how brain injuries and strokes can affect these nerve pathways. Imagine this is a bird's eye view of your head and what we have here are your two eyes and the two hemispheres of your brain. This is the object we are looking at. When we look at an object, the first thing you need to realise or understand is that the image is flipped onto your retina. The lens actually flips the image. So you've got the red on the left here and we've got the blue on the right. What happens is this image actually gets flipped onto your retina. So I'm just colouring in the retina to see how this image would actually fall onto it like this. So you can see here that lovely colouring in there, okay, that the actual image on your retina is actually back to front. Now when the nerves leave your eye and go to your brain, they actually leave in a very weird way. Let's start with the red portion. So the red portion on this side is going to come out and it's going to cross over and go onto the opposite side of the brain. Whereas this one here is going to come out. It's actually going to stay on the same side. So if you look here, both red portions go to the right side of the brain. And if we do the blue portion now, the blue bit on the right hand side here goes to the left hand side of the brain. And the blue portion on that side also goes across. So the blue portion ends up in the left hand side of the, of the occipital lobe. And there's one very important part here and that is, I'm going to do this in a different colour here, this middle section where everything kind of bundles together. This is called your optic chiasm. Okay, and that's where all these nerves kind of come together in a tight bundle and kind of cross over or stay on the same side. And this is really, really important because how we see things can be affected if any of these nerves are damaged. So for example, let's get a, let's get a black on here. Um, if we damage, let's say, just this part of this nerve, you would lose this part of your vision. If you were to damage, let's see, this bit here, if we follow that nerve all the way back, okay, we're gonna follow it all the way around, you would lose this part of your vision. Now, what do you think would happen if we damaged this part of the nerve tracts? You would actually lose both inside halves of your vision, which is really weird. But if that went all the way across the middle, like this, and we damaged all of this here, you'd be completely blind because you've lost all of the tracts going to the back of your brain. So this is really, really important when people have a stroke and the stroke occurs along any of these nerve pathways or any head injuries that damage these nerve pathways can actually influence what we see on kind of the outside, on the outside or inside halves of our eyes. We've got one last experiment for you to try. We're gonna find out which eye is your dominant eye. You don't need any kit, all you need are your hands and something to look at in the distance. To perform this experiment, put your hands out in front of you and create a triangle with your fingers and thumbs. Put the object in the distance in the centre of the triangle and close your left eye. If the object remains in the centre of the triangle, your right eye is your dominant eye. If it moves to one side, that eye is your weaker eye. Now, if the object remains in the center for both your left eye and your right eye, 
then both eyes have equal dominance. How cool is that? That's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed all the experiments and all the fantastic things we've shown you today. Until next time, Mavericks out. You can actually see these cells on your cornea using an anterior segment optical. Damn it. <laughs> optical coherence, okay. You can actually see these cells in your cornea using an optical... No! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you can actually see these cells in your cornea using an anterior segment optical coherence tomography. Yes, I said it. And this is mine being... Anterior segment optical coherence tomography. Optical coherence, no, optical, uh, anterior segment, optical coherence, tomography. You can actually see these cells in your cornea using a very special piece of kit called an anterior segment optical coherence tomography. Yes, I said it. And this is me having mine scanned and it produced these two amazing images. Oh. So good. <laughs>